Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Did you know you were going to get a head kick in that one, or is it just something that just showed up for you? Listen, nothing ever just shows up. You know what I'm saying? We don't do lucky stuff where I'm from. You know what I mean? Um, everything's planned and prepared for, you know? Um, now, did I know that it was going to come at that moment? No. No, but, um, you know, me and my coaches knew that it would be there. We, we trained for it. You know, we drilled it a lot. Um, and, you know, it had emphatic results. Is that a weird one where you prepare for something, so when it happens, you're like, that was meant to happen, or when it happens, you're like, yes, we prepared for the right thing. That's awesome. I mean, you know, it's, if anything, it's just like a confidence booster, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, okay. So you can identify holes and exploit them, you know? And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole complicated thing, you know, you don't... And, you know, this fight's over, so uh, when I get ready for the next fight, I'm not gonna expect my next fight to be like this fight, you know? That would be, that would be kind of foolish, you know? Um, but, I mean, I will prepare for it and plan to finish it early, but I'll prepare to go 15, you know? So you don't just go from here to become, well, oh, I'm the head kick guy now and just spam those. No, guys. no, no. I'm not planning on just like uh, being the one hitter quitter. You know, I'm not Anthony Johnson all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> or Francis Ngannou, you know. Um, but now. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> but here's the thing. Now everybody knows. Now everybody has to respect the, the fact that, you know, if you're in there with me, you can go to sleep. Something that people have never given me credit for is, you know, if you watch all my fights, I get shot on, you know what I'm saying? And the reason people shoot on me is because they don't like standing with me, you know what I'm saying? I start touching people up. Uh, and so I just haven't got an opportunity to do that, you know what I mean? And granted, now I'm, I'm stronger and I'm faster, I'm more technical, so I'm just more dangerous overall. Um, but yeah, you know, um, now people are gonna have to prepare for me a little bit differently than they had been before. Talk about people preparing for you. Am I right in saying you called out Mr. Ian Gary while you were uh, there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's, uh, what's it about Mr. Gary that has your, your attention? Listen, man, you know, what's crazy about this is um, when I won tough, um, you know, I was feeling good. I was happy with myself. Uh, but literally, like, the next week, you know, established veterans were on social media talking junk. You know what I'm saying? Like, people who had literally... 10 times, maybe not 10 times, but they had a way more fights than they had way more fights than me. And they're on there talking about if that was me, I would have did this, did that. And so, it, you know, it's one of those things that became very apparent to me early on. You know, it, you know, in this business, it's it's either you're getting your rep, your clout taken or you're taking someone else's rep and clout, you know. And um, someone like Ian Gary, I'm looking at him, you know what I'm saying? He's got, he's he's hot right now, you know what I'm saying? He's got a lot of clout, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are paying attention to him, you know. He's supposed to be the next Conor McGregor. And, you know, I'm just watching him fight and I'm not that impressed, you know. And, you know, it, that'd be, as far as people who are unranked go, you know what I'm saying? That's probably the most high profile matchup I can get. So. I mean, I'm not the only one who wants to fight that dude, but, you know, now I don't know how many, uh, you know, hopefully they make it. If they don't, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep on grinding, but that's the fight I would like, yeah. When you say you're unimpressed with what you're seeing, is that you're unimpressed with what you're seeing in relation to how hyped he is or you're just unimpressed with him in general? In general. In general. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a good fighter. He's in the UFC. You know, he's done his thing. You know, um... Yeah, I know people people go talk junk about me talking junk about Ian Gary, but you know I'm just watching it and I just see a lot of holes. You know, I see a lot of things that I can exploit, and you know, when I see stuff that I can exploit, you know, it doesn't matter what your name is. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what your ranking is. You know, if I think I can beat you, I'm gonna say I can beat you. You know? Cool. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. The other person you called out, Brian Barberina, he responded to you and said, good try, but we spell our names the same. I know. <laughs> oh, I messed that up so bad. You said, they, nice. told me, they told me that as soon as I went backstage. I was like, God, I'm an idiot. Dang. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> said, nice win, though, but keep working, bud. <laughs> I can't even say anything back, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no response, you know what I'm saying? I messed it up, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> um, I did want to talk about your uh, weight cut, man. Uh, yeah. how, how did that go? Um, it went pretty well. 
<laughs> no, I mean, it was good. It was, it wasn't, definitely wasn't the easiest weight cut I've ever had. Um, you know, I was telling a lot of people, I felt like I could have still fought at 85. You know what I'm saying? My walking around weight's still about 95 pounds, so that'd be a small middleweight. But I still could have fought at middleweight and been comfortable. Um, but, you know, I felt like I could make welterweight. Um, you know, I felt that, you know, that was the most, um, the way I can get the most out of my body. You know what I'm saying? My body's like a vehicle. You know what I mean? So, you know, we got to tune it up. We got to make adjustments where we can and get this thing performing at maximum capability. You know what I'm saying? And I think welterweight's that division. So um, it, it wasn't a fun cut, but it wasn't. It wasn't a terrible cut, you know what I'm saying? We did a lot of preparation leading up to the up to the cut. I got my weight down. I did a lot of dieting beforehand. Shout out to um, Wayne there and Mills who uh, did some meal prep for me. You know, um, I was training a lot, so I was burning calories like a mug, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun, but, you know, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. So, you know, it's all good. Did it feel any different, like? Did you feel any different? Um, I felt a whole lot sexier, baby. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I, it made me a little bit more vain. That's what it did. Because I was like, I was checking the mirror. I was like, I was like, oh, still got five pounds left to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, no, it was cool. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, look good, feel good, play good. You know what I'm saying? And then in my situation, it's look good, feel good play good, get paid good, you know what I'm saying? Where's that extra 50 Gs, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, yeah, no, it, uh, and I just, I felt faster, um, you know, naturally, you know what I'm saying, you're dropping weight, and the, the thing that surprised me and other people too is I feel stronger right now. I feel as strong as I've ever felt, um, and, you know, that, that doesn't normally happen when you go down a weight class, but, you know, I think that's just, my body is just getting ready to, you know, perform at, capability they put you on the tough tough finale card um how's it feel just kind of be on the, the the tough finale card oh man i love it i love it it's like coming full circle and then being around all these guys from the newest season of tough i love it you know um you know i i got my trophy with me again <laughs> so you know after after the finale if um the the whoever wins the two fights, yo, if you want to get together and we take like a like a cool tough contestant picture, you know what I'm saying? Let's do it because everybody wants to hate on the new seasons of tough. You know, With us tough people, we got to stick together. You know what I'm saying? Everyone, everyone's talking about the contender series. Screw those guys, baby. Tough is where it's at, baby. <laughs> tough is where it's at. Understandable. Um, and then finally for me, there are three bears on this car. There's Brogan the bear. Yeah. There's Sergey Polar Bear, and yeah. then there's Pooh Bear. You. Yeah. Rank them. Well, here's the thing. Pooh Bear's dead. Pooh Bear's dead. I, mean, I don't go by Pooh Bear anymore. You know what I'm saying? There's, people still call me Pooh Bear, but I don't go by Pooh Bear. We, the person you saw in there today was Brian Battle, you know. But, you know, if you want to give me a nickname, you know what I'm saying, if you got to call me something, now you can call me the Butcher because, you know, I'm getting in there and I'm finishing these dudes and then I'm taking their hearts home with me as trophies. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Pooh Bear's dead, you know. Brian the Butcher Battle? I mean, I'm not telling you to call me that. <laughs> But I am saying it has a nice ring to it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. In the past, Brian, looking at your record, there's so many times it's your fights have ended in, ended in submissions. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like your striking game has turned a corner? Do you feel like now that's what people really need to kind of maybe pay more attention to you about? Um, for sure, but it, it's, it's something like I mentioned earlier. I mean, if you go back and you watch a lot of those fights, a lot of those submissions come because I'm putting pressure on people on the feet and they take a bad shot and then I submit them off of that bad shot, you yeah. know? So the striking's always been there. It's definitely more devastating now, you know what I'm saying? 100% more devastating. I'm in a, a, a smaller weight class where I have a bigger frame. Um, you know, my athletic training is different than it's ever been before so um i'm definitely more dangerous but the striking has always been there you know um what i'm doing now is just more polished forms of what me and my coaches have been working since day one you know what i'm saying conceptual stuff just cleaning it up making it a little bit sharper a little bit more um dangerous so but yeah no it's, this is something where now you know not even a couple weeks ago there were people talking about I didn't have pop on my shots, which is whatever, you know what I'm saying? I don't ever take anything personally. I just notice it, you know what I'm saying? I just, 
take it a little personally, but. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, <laughs> I mean, I just remember it, you know what I'm saying? I don't take it personally. I just remember it until I die, you know what I'm saying? But, um, uh, yeah, so now that's definitely something where people know now, you know, if you get in the cage with me, I can put you to sleep, and it can happen fast, you know? Last few fights, it's been about six months in between. I mean, is that, like, the sweet spot for you, or would you rather be staying busy? Staying busy, staying busy. I want more, one more fight before the end of the year. I would say about three fights a year is a sweet spot. Um, four fights would be doable, but three fights a year, that feels good. And then going forward from this point, if I can get one more before the end of the year, yeah, that, that'd be good. That gives me enough time to train, get better, and then get into a fight camp and really lock into a, an opponent. And speaking of opponents, last one for me. I mean, you mentioned two two great guys when you got Gary and you got Barbarena, mm -hmm. but two total different spectrums. You got one guy that's sort of riding the hype train. He's the yeah. new big thing. Mm -hmm. And then you got Barbarena, who's a proven vet, who's got a lot more experience and wins than would say what well, Gary. Which one makes more sense for you? And which would you rather, if you had and were able to get one of those fights, which is better for you now and better for maybe your career? Uh, Gary. Gary, the I hype. think. Yeah, I mean, you know, it... it it's, it's like fighting is weird because it's not necessarily like the best fighters who always, you know, get all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Get all the, the clout and whatever, you know what I'm saying? You got to catch people's attention, you know what I'm saying? It's not just about winning, but it's about how you win, you know what I'm saying? It's not just about performing, it's about how you perform. And so um, right now, a lot of people are really impressed with him, you know what I mean? And so I can make a big statement by going out there and beating him, you know? And likewise for him, a lot of people are really impressed by me. So he could make a big statement by coming out and beating me. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's something that they're going to make happen. But, it's you know, we're in the same division now. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of guys that I want to fight that I didn't I didn't mention their name yet because I'm just not in that place yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, that would get shot down. But I love this division. I love how many killers are in there. You know what I'm saying? I wake up, you know. I wake up with cold sweats every night, and I'm like, I got to go train, dude. There's killers in this division. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't like, uh, rest on my laurels. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, this, this whole division is extremely dangerous, and it's really exciting. I can't wait to keep on climbing the ranks. That's awesome. Do you bring the trophy to every fight or just this one because it's the finale? I mean, shoot, man, that thing's good luck, baby. You know what I'm saying? It? I'm bringing it with me because I'm the ultimate fighter. It's, like <laughs> not even the, it's not even the competition. I'm just... Fighting, you look up Ultimate Fighter on the internet, it should just pop up as Brian. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get a tattooed somewhere on me. Shoot, <laughs> I dig it. Congrats on the victory. Thank you, brother. All right, Brian, one for me. Uh, first off, The Butcher, that's a great nickname, man. Thank like, you. I'm gonna keep Thank calling you that. I mean, uh, call, I didn't tell you to call me, but I like it. You did if you say yo, Butcher, I'll respond. Be like, what's up? <laughs> All right, and you mentioned in previous fights how people would try to shoot on you because they didn't want to stand with you, but you've shown that you've got that knockout power tonight. But where's that next improvement in your game going to come at? Um, in every aspect of the game, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still need to improve my wrestling. Um, my grappling can still get better. You know, there's still... Um, I, to actually, to, to really answer that question, rephrase it a little bit, Every day, I, I get better. I'm getting better and better and better. And as I get better, it blows my mind because I'm like, how much stuff do I need to get better at? You know what I'm saying? It's like I get better at one thing. I'm like, nice. But then it's like three more things show up that I got to get better at. So it's like um, on one hand, sometimes it gets overwhelming. But on the other hand, it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? Because it's literally like in grappling, you know what I'm saying? Like we're working on front headlock position right now and doing a bunch of stuff for front headlock position, but I can always work on my back control. My back control can get better. My transitions can get better, like getting out of guard, you know what I'm saying? Striking, there's still a lot of things in the striking game. You know, I'm not going to put myself on blast right now, but there's still things in the striking games I got to work on, I got to clean up, um, you know, against the cage, you know what I'm saying? Chaining stuff against the cage and, you know, cage tactics and whatnot. And then just overall athleticism. I can still get stronger. I can still get faster you know I can push my cardio to a different level so long answer to a short question every aspect of the game I still need to get better at oh no that was a great answer and the last one for me you mentioned in the cage after the fight that you had that one hit a quitter on the machine turn that 10 into 70 you're gonna try to press that luck again tonight listen man <laughs> tonight <laughs> tonight we are burning this town down. Me and my boys, we are gonna go out. I've been a good boy all week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been inside the casino 
You know what I'm saying? I've been looking. I've been like, all right, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Saturday night's coming. Saturday night's coming. And guess what? It's Saturday night. So I'm, I'm going to take a take more than one shot. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah, no, we're going to have a good time tonight. I'm, I'm going to try, you know, gamble a little bit. You know, nothing too crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, something respectable, you know. Uh, as long as I'm winning. The moment I start losing, I'm out of there. That's bad mojo, you know what I mean? But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, that's all I got for you. Congrats all right, on the thank win. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All right.